Welcome back. Today we're going over the curious case of Phineas Gage. Phineas Gage was a handsome, 150 foot pound, well muscled, blue eyed, 5 foot 6 inch foreman working on a railroad in Vermont. Phineas was considered to be the most competent railroad foreman in his hometown. Phineas was working one day drilling holes to install blasting caps to blow apart sections of rock to install the newly formed railroad. And Phineas's job, he had commissioned the manufacture by a local blacksmith of a three and a half foot long, inch and a quarter round iron rod. And it tapered from a point. To 11 inches down its shaft. The rod was used after packing the gunpowder in a hole that had been drilled into the rock. They would put in a blasting cap and then tamp down clay and sand to the top of the hole, confining the explosion to the lower areas, blowing out that rock. During the installation of this one of these holes, Phineas has turned his head to talk to one of the other folks on his team and at that precise instant the rod he was holding in his hand created a spark in the hole and exploded the driving rod because he was talking his mouth was open and that rod went up through his jaw passed up behind his eyeball and exploded out the top of his head shooting straight forward some 80 feet beyond. Phineas was not knocked unconscious. He continued talking. He sat upright on a carriage ride all the way back to town to visit the town doctor. Phineas was lucky in that his town doctor was a gentleman by the name of Harlow who had attended a famous medical school where he had observed the trepanning, that is the intentional drilling into the skull to relieve pressure from head wounds. Dr. Harlow then proceeded to do something that became a first in the annals of medicine. He began working on that hole. He noted that the hole in the bottom is likely what created the relief of pressure that saved Phineas's life. Upon examination, at first, Dr. Harlow did not believe the story Phineas told him about the rod passing through his head. Because the man was animated and still coherent, he didn't believe the story until he collapsed over and began to vomit and lost several ounces of his brain onto the doctor's floor. Ugh. That caused the doctor to immediately change his tune and to begin working on the wound, accepting the story at face value. The doctor cleared out all of the brain matter. He had a, an assistant help him shave his head. He pulled out bits of skull and about an ounce of gray matter from his brain. He then bandaged the patient and left him to heal. Phineas passed into a coma for the next 10 days and 12 days later, the doctor noticed that a fungus had sprouted from the top of his head and coming out of his eye socket. The doctor performed a surgery to remove the fungus he cut the fungus out of the top of the head and he cut down his forehead to relieve the pressure from the eye. And then he poured silver nitrate into the wound, killing the fungus. The wound continued to drain, but curiously, after a month, Phineas was doing fine. He was able to go back to his parents' house after a month. And after about four months, he was recovered where he was walking and talking and acting normally, though his left eye continued to droop and remain closed for the majority of his life. That condition is, is something that happens when there is brain damage. 
What was interesting about this case, and the reason Phineas Gage is famous, is his story was told in over, is told in over two-thirds of the existing medical textbooks on neurology. It was the first time that brain damage had been linked to personality changes. Immediately after the accident, Phineas, who had been a competent, courageous, and dynamic individual, who the, for, who the company owner said was the best foreman that they ever employed, began to curse uncontrollably. To The barrier was lowered between the human and the animal mind, according to Dr. Harlow, immediately after the accident, and he, he began to curse uncontrollably so that he wasn't welcome in mixed company. He then took to drinking for some time and uh, was exhibiting unusual personality disorders. This led over time after his death to a variety of speculations that have long proven to be untrue. And in fact, in later life, Phineas lived a normal life. In fact, he even became a stagecoach driver all the way down in Chile, where he drove a team of six horses winding around curvy mountain paths. His day was typically 13 hours long, and it would start out early in the morning, feeding the horses, loading all of the heavy luggage on top of the stagecoach, and, in fact, taking money from the passengers, making change, and then traveling some 100 miles down winding mountain fat paths with a 16 stagecoach all by himself. In fact, it, doctors now believe that that structure that was related to the stagecoach driving helped to facilitate his recovery, and it matches some of the research done on brain injuries in later days. Phineas never was without that rod. It, it, it stayed for one year at Harvard Institute. He, for a period between the injury and moving to Chile to become a stagecoach driver, Phineas was exhibited at P.T. Barnum's Living Museum in New York. He attempted to make money traveling around and showing his injury and his rod to, to make uh, money, but it, he discovered that folks weren't really that interested and it wasn't very profitable for him. But he kept that blasting rod with him for the rest of his life. We never had any photographs of Phineas. What we had was a plaster cast that was done at Harvard, his skull that was exhumed after his death and uh, put on display in Harvard along with that metal rod. Up until 2009, and some collectors of rare old photographs realized that a photo that they had found 30 years before was curious. So they posted that photograph on Flickr, the photograph sharing website. They posted the photograph with the title One-Eyed Man and His Harpoon. Whaling enthusiasts quickly noticed that the metal rod wasn't a harpoon and Instead, someone familiar with the story of the story of Phineas Gage, named Michael Spurlock, who was an administrator in Missoula, Montana, noticed the photograph and decided that that iron looked a lot more like a tamping iron. Spurlock knew the Gage story well enough that. He thought it may be a photograph, the first ever photograph of Phineas come to light. So he wrote to the owners of that photograph, and eventually the photograph was sent back to Harvard, where a photographic expert looked at it, took photos of the photograph, and noticed an inscription written on the iron bar. Eventually, his relatives were tracked down and a second daguerreotype photograph emerged, again of Phineas, the one-eyed, handsome man, the first ever 
successful severe brain trauma patient in modern medicine to have ever been annulled in medical history. And the the pole that he used, his tamping iron, was engraved with the words, this is the bar that was shot through the head of Mr. Phineas P. Gage. That bar still resides, along with his skull, in the museum at Harvard Medical School. Harvard has never officially declared that the daguerreotype is that of Mr. Gage, but his family members who have the other photograph are quite certain. And that is the amazing story of the man that survived the explosion of an iron rod an inch and a quarter in diameter that was able to penetrate and shoot straight through his head 80 feet away. Yet he survived and lived a normal life. He did die young at the age of 36. What happened to Mr. Gage is he began to experience epileptic seizures he traveled back from his job in Chile to where his mother and sister had moved to San Francisco. And it was there he succumbed to a series of epileptic seizures in the middle of the night. Eventually, the doctor, Dr. Harlow, sent back for his skull. And his mother delivered the tamping rod to Mr. Harlow, who donated them to the Harvard Medical School, where they remain to this day. If you like that story, stick, uh, check back frequently for more of our exciting videos. Hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We look forward to seeing you in the future.